Harper Collins and Harper Audio present The End is Always Near Apocalyptic Moments from the Bronze Age Collapse to Nuclear Near Misses by Dan Carlin. This is the author. A note before we begin don't forget to download the accompanying enhancement PDF for a list of further reading materials from your audiobook provider or Go directly to www.harpercollins.com slash audio slash end is always near. Preface Do you think that modern civilization will ever fall and our cities will ever lie in ruins? It sounds like an overused science fiction theme, with the archaeologists of the future carefully poking around the rusting skeletons of New York, London, or Tokyo's skyscrapers, subways, or sewers, removing our dead from their graves and studying them like we do ancient Egyptian mummies, trying to decipher our language, unlock the code that is our writing, and figure out who we were, to imagine our tombs, buildings, and human remains being treated the way we today treat ancient archaeological finds might seem unimaginable but there's a pretty good chance that that's what the mummy being excavated thought about his time and place, too. There's no right answer to a question like that, of course. Many of the questions raised in this book fall into that same unanswerable class. Maybe that's part of what makes them so intriguing. Just noting past evidence and extrapolating it out to future events can get weird quickly. To imagine things that have happened many times in history, repeating in the modern era, is to dabble in science fiction. It is a very thin membrane that separates factual history from unprovable and speculative fantasy. The instant in which we all live is the point at which those two things, the hard chronology of recorded names and dates, and the what-ifs and alternative realities of possible futures, intersect. To imagine the 21st century world being hit with a great plague like the great disease pandemics of the past, is fantasy. Yet it's also extremely possible, and has happened many times before. What's the connection between the factual past and the speculative future? I'm told that any conventional book should answer questions, or should at least provide an argument. If that's true, this will not be a conventional book. It's more of a collection of loosely connected vignettes. I have no argument, which is consistent with the approach we take in the podcast as well. My approach is that of a non-expert, for that is what I am. Historians, political scientists, geographers, physicists, sociologists, philosophers, authors, and intellectuals in general have all weighed in over the eras on all the sorts of issues we ponder in this book, each doing so using their own methods and viewing them through their own eras, specialties, and cultural lenses. While a modern geographer might cite global historical analogies to make an argument about a civilization falling, or a physicist provide the math to determine the likely probability of a dark age creating asteroids striking Earth, the approach of a storyteller or journalist is to look at the human angle. This is also the job of the historian. Often journalism and history have a somewhat interconnected, symbiotic relationship as journalists write of current events, and then historians mine their work later as primary sources. Often journalists then use the work of historians to tell stories of the past that the historians unearthed, as we are doing here. What sort of human stories are going on as a civilization collapses? A bombing raid destroys a person's city, or a pandemic begins to unravel the bonds holding a society together? Seeing things through that lens engages different parts of the brain, including emotions, and can often have an impact that the data, graphs, and research studies don't. Think of it as another tile in a vast mosaic, as many disciplines try to restore an image of the past. Do tough times make tougher people? Does how we raise our children have an impact on society at large? Can we handle the power of our weapons without destroying ourselves? Can human capabilities, knowledge, and technology regress? There's a very Twilight Zone sort of element to such ideas, with subtle, and sometimes not so subtle, overtones that seem to speak to our present times, 